an important checkbook IRA case. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney, founder of IRA Financial. On November 18, 2021, McNulty v. Commissioner was released to the public. Now, this should have been a very unremarkable case about someone using a self-directed IRA LLC. That means an IRA that owns 100% of an LLC to buy IRS-approved gold coins and hold the coins at home. Now, we know because of the tax code, Section 408M is clear that you're not allowed to purchase IRS-approved metals and hold them at home. 408M is clear that IRS-approved bullion, gold, silver, palladium, as well as American Eagle or state-minted coins must be held in the physical possession of a U.S. trustee, which is essentially a depository. That means clearly you can't hold IRS-approved coins at home. So this should have been a very short and uneventful opinion. However, the tax court spent 20 plus pages going through analysis, not just focusing on the violation of the statute, which was clear, but talking about a concept of control or possession of an IRA asset, also known as unfettered control or command. Now, for most of you self-directed IRA investors, if you're not buying gold and not thinking about storing IRS approved gold or coin at home, really don't have to worry about this case. But if you plan on purchasing, purchasing cryptos and then moving those cryptos off an exchange to a cold wallet that you hold at home, the McNulty case has significance. Prior to McNulty, there was no guidance as to whether you can pull cryptos off an exchange and hold them in a cold wallet, i.e. a Ledger Nano, like a USB, right? Why do people do that? Added security, more protection. If your coins or your cryptos are not connected to the internet, i.e. they're cold, you should have more protection from a hack. <clears throat> However, the McNulty case comes out and doesn't just focus on coins, which clearly holding them at home violates the statute, but it talks about possession of an IRA asset, which is not permitted. Therefore, the concern is you can take the premise and the language in the McNulty opinion and apply that to holding cryptos at a cold wallet at home, right? If you're holding a Ledger Nano at home with your Bitcoin or your Ethereum, clearly you're possessing an IRA asset, which according to McNulty is not permitted. That creates a taxable distribution you would have unfettered control or command. So this is one of the, I would say, long-term side effects of the McNulty case. Again, it should not have been a remarkable case. I should not have even really been doing a video on it because clearly you can't hold coins at home under 408M. But the tax court went into discussion on possession of an IRA asset and unfettered control. Now, if you buy real estate, you're buying stock certificates, case law is clear, and I'll even cite the case law, it's clear you do not have to worry about the McNulty case. There's case law that states unequivocally that you can hold certificates, transaction documents associated with that IRA asset without triggering a prohibited transaction. Cases like McGaw v. Commissioner and Ansira v. Commissioner, which is a 2002 tax court case, clearly says you can hold a stock certificate titled in your IRA without being deemed to have possession of that IRA asset. But digital assets is a new class of assets, like digital gold. So just like McNulty applies to gold, <clears throat> the concern is that McNulty can also apply to holding cryptos off the exchange in a cold wallet as well. Now, if you're holding cryptos on the exchange, nothing to worry about, right? Because you have no possession of that asset. That asset is on the exchange. But if you're going to remove the crypto off the exchange into a cold wallet, got to be cautious of McNulty and probably at this point should not do it. IRA Financial is working on a solution through a dual signature wallet where we will allow our clients to do it, where IRA Financial will have dual signature authority with the client. So this way the IRA owner will not have the unfettered control or command of that crypto wallet 
and thus satisfying the McNulty case. So overall, again, it's clear, don't hold coins in an IRA at home. I've done a million blogs and videos and podcasts about that. But this case is important for any crypto holders seeking to hold cryptos off an exchange into a cold wallet. Don't worry again if you're holding them on the exchange, you're cool. McNulty won't apply. Same with if you're doing real estate or private investments or hard money loans or private business investments, you're good. But if you wanna pull the cryptos off the exchange, the possession of an IRA that's cited in the McNulty case, along with the concept of unfettered control, is problematic and you should wait for IRA Financial to devise its solution so you can do that without violating the McNulty case.